This is Adam Gorney, Rivals.com Signing Day Show continues now with South Carolina coach Shane Beamer. And, and Shane, not a lot of activity today, but that's kind of nice, right? Like everybody's kind of locked in already and, and ready to go, signed and, and good, huh? Yeah, just kind of a testament to the guys that we have in this class. They're just about work. They love football. Um, I was on a group. I'm, I'm on a group text with all of them, and they were all talking last night about who was going to be first to get their papers in, and and pretty much everybody had it in by 7:45 this morning. And the last one was uh, Mason Love, our kicker, and he was just on Central Time, so his came in I think at 8:05 Eastern Time, and then we were essentially done. So I uh, really appreciate these guys. And it's a group that's been committed to us for a while now, stayed committed, withstood the advances and efforts of a lot of other schools to try and get on the flip. And, and they all stayed strong. Speaking of that, and, and it's understandable, five-star defensive end Dylan Stewart had some you know, overtures late here, uh, getting him wrapped up and signed. What can he be for you, that length and that athleticism off the edge? And you kind of want to get him against some 300 pound offensive linemen to muscle him up a little bit. Yeah. He's um, uh, just what we need. You know, we didn't generate enough pass rush last year. We need to continue to put more pressure on quarterbacks and be more, bit more disruptive uh, behind the line of scrimmage. We were, um, you know, young at that position and, and rotated a lot of guys last season, had some new faces, whether it be transfers or freshmen at that edge position. So to be able to get Dylan in here along with our guys that are a year older uh, in our program is exactly what we need. And you can't, you know, this from covering this for so long, you can't have enough of those body types. And uh, we need more body types like that to, to help our football team. Um, we moved Josiah Thompson up to the fourth best offensive tackle in the class. We, we, we don't know if that's high enough yet. Uh, very, very talented kid. Um, joined by Cam Pringle and Blake Franks. And I don't like to call people monsters, but the, those three are, are big monsters, huh? Yeah, they are. Um, all three of those guys are guys that when I got hired three years ago this month, they were put on my radar pretty much immediately um, that we got these three young linemen coming up here in the state of South Carolina. And, and we've been recruiting them ever since, but they're uh, sky's the limit for all three of them. They're all athletic. They're all big. You're exactly right. Um, we need to get bigger on the lines on both lines of scrimmage. And those guys will certainly help that great young men. And, and you're right about Josiah. I mean, he's a really, really talented guy. All three of them are, but you know, Josiah is a guy that just continues every time you see him, you feel like he's, he's just so long and you feel like he just gets bigger uh, every time, every time you're around him. South Georgia is a special place because you just don't see athletes like that anywhere else, maybe in the entire country. Uh, Jalewis Solomon is one of them. And, you know, he has a brother elsewhere. There are definitely factors playing into that, but you got to, you kept him in, in the class. How important is he? Where do you kind of see him long term? And, and again, is it, is that just a body type and an athlete that you bring in and figure it out? Yeah, no, he, he can pretty much play um, wherever he wants. And in our minds, he's going to start out as a corner. We're going to try and get him ready to play, not try. We are going to get him ready to play uh, at that spot, you know, in year one. And, He's um, there's just something special, um, something special about him. You know, it looked like he was going somewhere else in the summertime, but I'll never forget the day he committed elsewhere. I got a text message from him that night at like 2 a.m. or that morning at 2 a.m. And all it said was just, please don't stop recruiting me. And um, and um, fortunate that he came back around and we were able to sign him. And, and I think he's got a chance to be has a chance to have a heck of a career here. He's just, he's made of the right stuff. He's very driven. He has high expectations for himself. And uh, just kind of one of those, when he tells you, when I, I was in his home last week, and when he tells you what he's going to accomplish in his career here at South Carolina, you believe him. And, uh, you know, everybody says that, but do they really have the work ethic and the character to accomplish all that they say they want to accomplish? And I believe he does. I text you sometimes at 2 a.m. I never get a response, so I, I guess I see where your priorities lie. <laughs> I didn't respond to him, him until the morning if it makes you feel any better. I'll just okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's talk portal for a minute because you can't talk recruiting without it. Um, your philosophy on it is, it, is it plugging holes? Is it half of a recruiting class now? What is it? And especially, I know you can't talk specifics, but at running back, you did a really nice job there. Yeah. Um, it, uh, it, it, for us, it's always going to start with high school recruiting. 
um, without a doubt. But I would say most college coaches would say this. If you go into a year and you say, okay, we need to sign three running backs. Well, you may offer 10 or 15 to sign three. And it gets to a point where maybe you had in the past to, I don't want to say reach, but maybe offer a guy that you really weren't quite sure was good enough to play here, but you almost had to just to make sure you hit that number. Whereas nowadays um, you offer what you feel like are the best of the best, the guys that at a position give you the opportunity to win SEC football games. And then if there's not enough of those, you know that you can go attack the portal. So for us, it's a combination of that, making sure we got enough guys at each position. It's looking at it and projecting, all right, we're going to be young at this position next year. Let's get some older guys in here from an experience standpoint, or this guy's likely to leave for the NFL. We're probably going to have to replace him with the portal, whatever it might be. So I think it's all kinds of things, knowing that you always are going to start in high school with the high school recruiting. That'll always be the case here. And uh, you're exactly right. You know, running back really feel good about what we've done there. And uh, really, if you look at our roster, um, every position, I believe, or I believe I know that we've increased the depth and the competition at every position here in the last three weeks. Now, quarterback is one that we've got to continue to attack. Um, and uh, wide receiver is one that we need to continue to attack. And, you know, certainly we're not against a couple more offensive linemen and you can never have enough defensive linemen DBs. So, I mean, we're still looking pretty much everywhere. But when you look at our roster, though, from top to bottom, we, we've we're deeper and we're more competitive at pretty much every position than we were at the end of the regular season. That is South Carolina coach Shane Beamer. Shane, thanks so much again, man. Thanks for having me on.